Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are facing a global and broad-based surge in inflation. Uh, inflationary pressures were already building up during the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic as economies reopened and supply couldn't match the sudden surge in demand. Uh, Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine brought additional disruptions uh, to commodity markets and pushed prices on those markets up further. Elevated food and energy prices are now spreading more broadly to affect core goods and services across many countries. Households and firms are suffering as costs rise and purchasing power is taking a hit. The war, uh, the burden of high energy and food prices, as well as zero COVID-19 policies in China mean that growth will be lower and inflation will be higher and more persistent. Uh, we project global GDP to grow at a modest 3% in 2022 and an even weaker 2.2% in 2023. This is well below the pace of economic growth projected prior to the war and represents around $2.8 trillion US in foregone global output in 2023. I mean, first, it is critical that monetary and fiscal policy work hand in hand to curb inflation while cushioning its impact. Monetary policy will need to continue to tighten in most major economies to time inflation durably. Policymakers should provide fiscal support to vulnerable households and firms, but in a way which ensures that price signals still operate to reduce energy consumption, uh, and also in a way uh, that is um, well targeted and temporary. Uh, Near-term energy security and affordability, supply diversification, energy efficiency and demand side measures are urgent priorities in the short term, which should be accompanied by stronger policy measures to enhance investment in clean technologies. 
Investments in clean energy are particularly needed to improve energy security, affordability, and to help achieve energy transition goals and to ease pressure on the availability of gas used as a transition fuel.